bacon. Sounds like bacon, like the food bacon bond, yeah. Hey everybody. So today we're going to be working on this polymer clay wand. So there will be a link to all our tools and materials down below. And so let's get this all together and let's get started. All right, to get started, you're gonna need some uh, tools and materials here. So as you can see here, I have my trusty pasta maker for um, conditioning my clay as well as um, bringing it out in the sheets and whatnot. And I have some cutters here and a tissue blade. Um, that's just some rocks in case you want to add some decoration, um, a ball stylus, brushes. You're going to need a piece of selenite. Um, now this piece actually broke off of a bigger one and I got a bunch of these at a relatively cheaper price because they had broken off. So we have that. As you can see that just kind of fell off of it. So these can be rather fragile. So just be wary of that. Put that over here out of the way. All right, and then you're gonna need Sculpey. Um, I'm kinda, I don't have a plan right now. We're just going to work with this. And as we go, I'll let you know um, colors and whatnot. I got some Gentle Plum Sculpey here. Go. Um, we're gonna start with that, just to get our base. Cut off a little block. I don't have my handles on my tissue blade, so just be careful. Um, as you can see, this container here is where I keep all of my sculpey clay and then some. All right, so let's go ahead. This one's rather usually pretty soft. Some of these are, um, so I shouldn't have any issues with getting that nice and rolled out here. Excuse the dogs. Alright, let's get this going. Now if you don't have selenite, you can use any other um, like crystals or rocks. Let me just show you some that we've done here. And we have this one that has just a piece of agate with a clay. Same here. It's kind of into elemental thing. We got some shells in it, um, some polymer clay leaves. Um, there's another there's a rock in there. So if you don't have the selenite, but you have some other rocks going on, you can use those or shells. So you can pick up. I got a bag like this. That's gonna make. A wonderful piece in the wand. Um, pick up a bag of these at the dollar store for a dollar. Um, so you can basically use anything you want into a wand. So our wand, this is going to be the point. So um, this first step we're going to do is the polymer clay. So this part one of this video here. Um, now part two is going to be our where we add the wire to it. So we'll after we finish it up, we'll get it baked and let it um, cool. Um, and then we'll have another video um, with wire wrapping it. So, all right, so that's nice and soft. So I'm just gonna break off a little piece here. Set that over there. I'm just gonna roll it out. Again, like I said, I don't have a design in mind. We're just going to see what happens. And that's the thing with polymer clay. Um, you could start out with a design, but the art's going to kind of do its own thing, in my opinion. It's like I kind of know where I would like it to go, but getting it there, I don't think it's going to happen. So... I don't know if you can see it in the light, but this has a nice little sheen to it. But I want to start incorporating my clay. So 
So I'm just gonna push that in there. Now I'm just taking and wrapping it around and as I do I kind of twist it to give it like a curly Q type thing. Just so it gives a little alright no we don't like that. <laughs> See that's why I said this will take on a mind of its own. I know what I'm trying to do but it's gonna do its own thing here. Now, I don't. You don't want to cover up too much of the stone. I mean, that's great. But if you're gonna, if you only want that much showing, I would break it. Well, I would try to break it down some, just so you're not wasting a lot of it. Because if you if you put your clay up to it, just there, you're covering all this up. So I want to be able to cover it without covering all of it. You understand what I'm trying to say there? Alright, let's just try this again. I think what we're going to do... Is... We'll go ahead and cover this. I want to give it a good base to hold on to. So I'm going to take some white. It's not going to look white. The thing with white, you should use gloves. For one, it's going to transfer a bit to your fingers. I'm not worried about that because I do a lot of coloring. But if you have any little dirt on your hand, it's going to pick it up. So the white is not white anymore. So I'll show you. It's more like a gray. But as again, I color my clay. Um, let's see, is that a good? That is. All right. Let's do this. Now I just cut a hole. Put it just like that, and then we're gonna squish it around. It's just giving it a base. Um, like I said, um, this you're not gonna see the white. Well, you might see some of the white, um, but I'm gonna color it. So I'm gonna pull this here. Alright, so here. So I've got some Perlex in the color gray lavender. I'm just gonna tap a little bit in the cap. Well, I was going to tap a little bit in the cap. I want to make a mess. Watch. Luckily, a little bit goes a very long way. Alright, and you should always have paper towels on hand in case things like that happen. So, I've got a little bit in the cap now. After cleaning up my mess, I'm going to just grab a brush. Okay, I'm going to nope, that's what I want. Um, that's a little bit too big. So I'm just going to use this one here. It's a little blending brush. Uh, nothing special when it comes to my brushes, makeup brushes. I got a little bit on there, tapped off excess, and then I'm just going to take and dab it on there. Just 
I want to cover the whole white. It looks dirty. It's quite all right. And that's why I say tap off the extra because it's, if you don't, it's going to get all over you. It's going to get all over you regardless. But I'm used to it. I will um, just wash my hands before I move on to another color. Luckily, right now we're working with purples. <laughs> so if I get a little bit on this, it's just going to add a sheen to it. It's not going to do anything else. Another thing, if you'll notice, I mean, the glare doesn't help any. Um, it'll pick up any texture. Um, so I'm going to show you what all I do first. Alright. Let me wipe this off my hands. Or at least try to. There. Okay. So we're going to take this little weird looking brush. It's a double sided, the tools that I got. I'm just going to take and run it over all things. It's going to break up fingerprints, um, weird lines. You can dab it like that. I like to dab and then I'll take and press and roll. And just distribute it all the way around. Now as you can see, The, the white is starting to show, but that's okay. It looks kind of like a rock, but it's got that purple tint and sheen. You can't, the camera doesn't pick up the color um, very much. Uh, make sure you get the bottom when you texture too. Just so you know it's even. And if you think you have too much white showing, you can take and run your brush over it. If you take a denser brush, you can run it. Just, to just get rid of some of the white. I like it how it is, so I'm going to leave it just like that. Again, it's personal preference. Paper towel it. So I need to roll my clay. All right, so now. You roll. It's a little smaller. Oops, sorry. Tripods in the way. Now the purple did pick up some of the Perlex pigment. That is fine. It's just gonna give it a little sheen in some places. That's okay with me. Some people use um, an extruder um, to make their ropes. Um, I don't have one. Um, I'll just sit here and roll it out. I don't have a problem with that. Yes, it's more uniform um, if you use one of those, but we'll see. Um, all right, we're gonna stop it there. It's probably a little more than needed. So now, I'm going to come up, and I'm just going to put a dot of the bacon bond. Bacon. Sounds like bacon. Like the food bacon bond. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to put just a little dot of it there. And that's because that's where my end is. So, if you see, I'm going to put my end there, kind of push it down. It's going to come off. It does that, but it'll it'll stay. And I'm just gonna run it around the top. Just like that. And then I think I'm gonna take a 
and run it around just a few times. Three. Might we'll just finish it out. Just like that. I'm gonna leave that down because I am going to expand on this and I want that to continue. Alright, so if you can pick it up in the light, some of the Prolix pigment got onto it. So you have that sheen, but it's not horrible. So I'm going to take and do that there. All right. So let me set that down. I have a piece of quartz. But I want to add some on the table here. No. I had a piece of quartz. Hold on just a second. Let me go find it. All right, we found it. So I just have a piece of regular quartz here. I want to kind of put as my middle. So, find out which end I want to do it on. Maybe I should get... Hmm. That should work. Okay, so I'm going to put some bacon on it. Push it on. Okay. And then with pushing it on, if you distort this here, it looks, it's fine. Um, I'll just take and run my brush around. Now, as you can see here, I kind of squish this together. I'm not worried about it. It does what it does. So take and kind of curl that like that. All right, yeah, I like that. All right, so there's that. So now I'm gonna make the rest of the handle. Um, to put here and uh -huh, maybe a couple inches so take my weights uh, probably need a little bit more with the weight um actually you know what i'll mix these two so i mix all right so i've gone ahead and mixed it up I didn't do it to it was solid, but it does have this really cool white effect in there. Um, and I'll just put it on the bottom of the quartz. I didn't use any bacon bond. Um, I just kind of, you can see, I've uh, moved it up around the edges there just to hold it there. So what we're going to do now is I want to add... This is antique gold. He'll focus. He likes to focus on everything but what I wanted to focus on. All right. All right. So, go ahead and break off a little piece of antique gold. Mm. I'm not going to need much, so... It's two ounces, so each is a half. So it's about a quarter of an ounce. I love that coloring when you cut it. Too bad I'm going to... 
soften this up. I actually have a couple scrap pieces of it here. So let me go ahead. I want to roll this out. Mm -hmm. Alright, let me see where I want to put it. Alright, so I have this crescent moon piece. I want to take and just cut out one. Let's see where I want to put it. The handle. I'm trying to see where I like it better. Yeah. Go ahead and put it on the handle. I'm just tapping it down. Actually, I forgot to texture our handle. So, the same thing we did up here. I'm just going to do down here. But I'm going to take it at the top and hold it. And then roll it down. Let me use this side here. There we go. So I give it some texture, break up any fingerprints. Let me zoom you in just a bit. There, so you can see. And if you want a different texture, you can do it. Um, anything else, if you want it smooth, you can take, I have this here, and run it through, just lines through it. That's what I do for my doors. And then, all right, so here we go. So, I think I'm going to put my moon here. All right, yeah, so I'm going to add just a little bit of bake and bond. The reason why I'm adding it here and not kind of pushing it into the clay much is this is the handle. Um, so I don't want it to fall off. And I find this would give it a good hold. And I don't want to have to use epoxy afterwards in order to um, get it on there. I want to incorporate this gold just a bit more. Um, let me do get that bit right there. I think so. Pull this up. Mm. Sorry about that. Alright, so let me zoom back out here so you can see more of what I'm doing. So I made a circle. I just want to dot it. You know what? I think I'm going to take our stamp. Okay, where's my gold again? I thought about putting the stamp on it. I like that idea. That I think that would look cool, but not with what I am wanting to do. So let me get another circle. And I think right there. just want to indent it. I don't want to cut all the way through. I'm going to do a little crescent. 
this is the smaller one. Since I don't have the a smaller crescent than that, I just took my circle cutter we have here. And I cut a circle and then I cut a little crescent out of it. So just to incorporate this with the side here, I'm going to put one here as well. So that's the one we have finished. We have this little swirl going out. And what I'm actually going to do with that is this. Come up. I'm going to have those two join. And then I'm going to take... Just no. Okay, so I went ahead and connected the line to there, so it looks like it's kind of creeping up. So that is the finished polymer clay part of the wand. So what we'll do now. I'm going to put it on my tray up here. We're going to bake this according to package directions. And then um, we'll let it cool. And then we will get it wire wrapped. So that will be the next video. Let me turn you around here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that baked. And then um, next week, we'll have the video of it being wire wrapped and show you just some, some different things that you can do um, to add some more to the wand. Um, don't forget to um, do a lot of things, apparently. <laughs> no, um, if you liked our video, go ahead and give that a thumbs up. Your likes and dislikes really help us a lot. We know what you wanna see and what you don't wanna see. So therefore, if you like it, I know, hey, I want to see more of this. If you don't, then, well, we'll need to come up with something else. Uh, we do post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday being our metaphysical corner, Wednesday our tutorial, and Friday is our product spotlight. Sorry about the lighting, guys. We're still working on that here. Um, so check us out on all our social media. You'll find links posted down below. And that's it for today so until next week stay tuned and see y'all later bye